Hey everybody and welcome to... Oh, I'm off camera. Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps. Today we are doing another book walk through the Judge Dread Mega City 1 archives. This time we are on volume 2, The Lawbringers. Now, as I mentioned in the first video, if, which if you've not watched, whoop, shake my camera. Highly recommend you go read or view that one first. But I am missing volume 1. I'm probably not going to find it for a little while. So... We'll just dive into this one. First up, you get an introduction. This book is purely fluff based. There's no rules in it for the RPG. This was meant to be all the fluff that you could use in a game as uh, additional characters. It's alphabetical, so at first we get Judge Anderson. I've never actually seen this picture in a comic, so I don't know where that's come from, whether it was made for this or I just haven't reached that far into the comics yet. But that's a strange looking Judge Anderson for me. I always remember the Debbie Harry early on versions of Judge Anderson. But it talks about how she took on the Dark Judges. It talks a little bit how size personalities are a lot different to a normal street judge. And obviously her gifts. Then goes, goes completely through her actual story to be fair about talks about the crisis of conscience where she believes the justice department isn't working for the people talks about how she needs to be vigilant and how her powers can be used for bad we then get judge beanie <laughs> such a great name they are yeah they are the child of america jara and bennett beanie so that was from democracy now story arc very sad story the judges took the child in of a pro-democracy person and manipulated them into becoming part of the Justice Department to show their strength. Then we have Judge Bonaventura. I don't know this one at all. There are unlucky judges and then there is Judge Bonaventura shooting an unidentified armed figure while on patrol. She had the misfortune to have blown away part of the foot of an SJS judge who was on an unrelated stakeout. Ooh. She gets uh, posted to the cursed earth and has to partner up with the Judge Colburn. I remember Judge Colburn. I don't remember her, though. Then we have... Who do we have? Judge Brufen. Brufen? At the present time, this judge is considered deceased and has been removed from service rosters. He used to be part of the Council of Five. He was a tech judge. Okay, okay. He was part of the many victims when Morton Judd attempted his takeover of the city with his clones. Judda is something that is missing from the Warlord games right now, and I really hope they do bring that in. Judge Bull. He is... Oh, he's from the pit. He is pretty damn cool. So he's hard-ass. Judge Dredd used him to clean up the corruption in Sector 301 and he became quite loyal. He then uh, progressed into the SJS and I still think his story is progressing. Judge Cal, he tried to and succeeded to take over the Justice Department. He also brought the Cleggs in. He forced the citizens to build a wall around the city to trap them in so they couldn't get out to the Cursed Earth. But in doing so, he actually built some of the best defences the city had against future attacks like Necropolis. Judge Callisto, uh, she also was in the pit. There's quite a few of the pit characters here. I'm quite lucky that I've uh, read these, that story recently. Oh, she's deceased. That hasn't happened yet for me. <laughs> her career started poorly. And shortly after earning her badge, she froze in a dangerous situation on the street. As a result of inaction, a fellow judge was seriously injured and she was removed from the active roster and put into admin. That's that's pretty sad. She joins the chief judge's personal assistant. Oh, Magruder. Okay, she wasn't in the pit. She was uh, part of the Mechanismo story where it tries to kill off Chief Judge Magruder. Decker, I have the mongoose model of her, actually. I should finish painting up these models. She sadly died during Judgment Day. 
That's pretty sad. I remember that story arc. She was one of Dredd's popular rookies that he trained and brought up to street level, and she died fighting off the zombie invasion. I remember that scene quite well. That was a sad story arc. Judge DeMarco, she's now a private eye in the current timeline. She is the daughter of a billionaire, but she still chose to join the Academy of Law. She had... Um, well, how could we put this? She had a little fling with another judge. Dredd learned about it and manipulated her to help clean up Sector 301. But she had enough in the end and ended up deciding to go back to normal life. Dirty Frank. I have the model. I love Dirty Frank. He is a great character. He's from the Wally squad. He's completely broken. He has a massive story arc in Trifecta. And then is it Small House, I want to say, is the other story arc? Oh, I love Dirty Frank. Judge Edgar, a mean-ass uh, PSU. So she was the surveillance, chief of surveillance of the city. And she was manipulating everyone around her. And she ended up getting caught and sent to work over a work camp in the Cursed Earth. Oh, I... Really enjoyed that story arc as well. Judge Fay, he is considered deceased. Who is Judge Fay? He, uh, oh, he precog. Uh, let's have a look. Same opportunities, distinguished himself in the streets, made a name for himself in psychometry and prophecy. Oh, he created the Judge Child saga. He believed the Judge Child was going to save Mega City One. In the end, Judge Dredd chased the Angel Gang across the galaxy to discover that the judge child was actually evil and Dredd left the child marooned on an alien world instead. The judge child then went on to actually attack Mega City One and Dredd had to go and kill the child. Uh, judge Fish, Judge Carl's deputy chief judge, he loved his goldfish so much that he made him the deputy chief and Dread assassinated Judge Fish. It, it was a weird time, the, uh, the 80s. Judge Garcia, as loyal as they come, and she's one of Dread's associates. Dredd, uh, Judge Garcia has a long, lifelong career of struggling to serve the Justice Department through one raw assignment after another. Oof. So she was with Bull at... Uh, Sector 301 helped clean up the department. Judge Giant, the classic, the classic. So he died during the Block War saga. That is a terrible picture of Judge Giant. He was killed by Orlok the Assassin. He is, uh, he is the son of Judge Clay. Here it is. Famous member of the Harlem Heroes Aero Bull team. A story arc I have not read from 2008. I really should. We then discover later on that he actually had a fling... And uh, he has a son who goes on to become a judge as well. That really upset Dredd at the time because he thought Giant was a distinguished man of great resolve and one of the best street judges around. And then he finds out that he had a child. But then it turns out that Dredd and Giant Jr. become pretty good allies and teammates in later stories. And Judge Giant Jr. is a great, great character in the comics. And we get Judge Grampus. So when Chief Judge Cal brought in the Clegs to help control Earth, Grampus was the leader of them. So of course, of course, Cal had to make him a judge. That is a great piece of artwork. I love it. Tells you a bit about the Clegg race. Status on Earth and Clegg's in space. Very cool. Judge Grice. Judge Grice. It's weird to hear his name like that. So he ends up trying to assassinate Dredd. Dredd is trying to loosen the control of the Justice Department on the city. Not completely pro-democracy, but he's trying to loosen control of the Justice Department. Grice doesn't like it. He tries to take out Dredd. Gets sent to Titan for 20 years, has his face changed into this disgusting respirator, but then he leads a revolt and attacks Earth, manages to take over Mega City 1 for a little while. Judge G 
Guthrie, Guth, Gut, Guthrie. I really hate saying names. Once again, another Pit 301 judge. He was an undercover judge who everyone believed had gone rogue when Dredd came to 301. But it turned out he wasn't rogue. He was just trying to fight the corruption that was going on. Judge Harriman, a deputy chief judge, was originally a street judge during his time. On the force, he served with distinction. He was even-tempered and unflappable. <laughs> I love that word. Uh, what have we got? Got to find out. Passed over promotion, not because of incompetence, but rather for the exact opposite reason. He was too valuable at peacekeeping to be taken off the street. Eventually, the time came where his qualifications and experience were just too extensive to be ignored. What followed was a rapid string of new positions, starting as sector chief and ended up on the Council of Five. And he was killed by Judge Mortis. Oh, that is not a good way to go. And of course, Judge Hersey. Initially, we find her in the Judge Child saga and she joins Dread. She then rapidly appears in quite a few comics alongside Dread and actually in a few of the stories. She gets all the way up to being a chief judge, but then she loses her power and quickly falls from grace. I'm not up to date on her story, but I do know she recently was killed off. Judge Izard. Oh, he's got the Colt 309, which is the sniper rifle, I believe. Double barrel shock blaster. Oh, okay. He's got like a shotgun. Nice. Uh, so ultimately, he had a pretty good record, but he was deemed hardcore and humorless by most of the judges. His death rates or kill rates were a lot higher than what should be allowed. The SJS, though, couldn't prove anything, so they forced him into early retirement, and he took the long walk into the Cursed Earth and became a character known as the Raggedy Man where he covered himself in rags and became slightly crazy. Oof, and he'd kill anyone who he deemed to be in his territory. Judge Janus, this was a character brought in when Anderson left the force for a while. They tried out two characters, Janus was one of them. She had some pretty cool stories and actually survived the return of Anderson and appeared in quite a few other story arcs. I personally like Judge Janus. Judge Judd, <laughs> what a character. Right, this is Morton Judge Judd. He, uh, he believed that the clones were the answer to the Justice Department's problems. The other Council of Five members didn't agree with him and they expelled him from Mega City One. He then created the Judd and tried to take over Mega City One. Judge Karen, this was the other one with Judge Janus to replace... Uh, Anderson, I thought she got a rough time. Her stories were a bit more supernatural, let's say. There was vampires and stuff in them. She also had pretty bad artwork, which was a real shame. I think it let her down, which is why Janus did better. Judge Colburn, classic. Purely works in the cursed earth. He's a bit of a lone gun. As you can tell, he's not dressed like a normal judge would be. His bike is this weird contraption that could only be built in the Cursed Earth. But he looks so cool. He's so cool. Judge Kraken. So this was one of the Judder was captured and he turned out to be a clone of the same birth stock as Judge Dredd and Judge Rico. So the Justice Department thought they would use him. At the time of writing, Dredd was getting old. And they were worried that Dread would have to retire. But they couldn't lose the face of Dread being on the street. So Kraken took on the name Dread and was meant to replace him. But after Dread went on the long walk, it turned out that Kraken had a slight flaw which allowed the dark judges to take over Mega City One for a time. Judge Kruger. So Kruger was a day stick fighting champion. And takes place in the competition and won it for four years running. And he prefers to use the day stick over his lawgiver, so he's pretty violent. Judge Curtin. Right, we are back. I had to take a quick break there. I was coughing like nuts. But anyway, 
Judge Curtin is up next. He, unfortunately, was a borderline psycho and he wasn't ever going to actually have psychic skills, but he was close enough to the edge that the Justice Department were worried that he might break. But following years of surveillance, he never actually broke in front of them. But Dredd still had his fears and was keeping a close eye on him to the point that he fled Mega City 1, which obviously proved his guilt to Dredd. He, uh, he ended up in... I can never pronounce these words. Barraquida, we're going to go with. Uh, <laughs> south of the border. Their judges are pretty much just cruel... <laughs> violent, corruptible individuals, and that kind of fit with Curtin quite well, to the point that Dredd went down to go and get him. Now, the chief judge down there, he didn't believe in Exodite and somebody that was actually doing really well in his city, so he refused Mega City 1's uh, claims to him, to the point that Dredd went undercover and ended up killing him, which is a little bit sad, but it did seem that he either had completely broken down and believed he had a little demon called Mo on his shoulder, shoulder, or he quite possibly could have been possessed by something. But we'll never know, because the poor Curtin is now dead. Judge Lata, part of the Judge Child saga, he was a pretty sideline character. He was the pilot of the starship. He was classified as one of the best pilots in the Justice Department, and he did help Dredd bring in the Angel Gang and deal with the Judge Child. Sadly for him, because of his involvement in that whole saga, Fink Angel, when he came to revenge his family's death, killed this guy quite early on with a little poison dart. So, I don't know, not much really on him. <laughs> Judge Logan, this is Judge Dredd's current assistant. Yep, Judge Dredd has assistants. We'll go for a few in this book, I would imagine. But Logan, I believe, is the current one. They're quite short-lived characters most of the time. you got people like Decker was an assistant. Uh, Pierre, I think is how you say her name. She was another one. They don't last long with Dredd. This guy has seemingly lasted quite a while. He has been brutally injured. He's had most of his internal organs replaced now. He's been shot to bits. He's had a hip replacement. He's pretty beat up, but he is still helping Dredd with the paperwork. So he also knows some dark secrets on Dredd's past. So if you want to know more, you've got to read the comic. I'm not going to tell you those spoilers. Judge Lopez didn't think he'd make it into this book as I kicked the camera. He was also part of the Judge Child story. Dredd took an instant dislike to him because of his mustache. And because he had psychic abilities, he got fed a drug whilst they were on their mission, which would help them find the judge child. It ultimately, ultimately led to Lopez's death. And Dredd actually felt guilt at the end of the mission and kept Lopez's badge and has it in his uh, quarters. And he does look at it from time to time and remembers the guilt that he had over forcing someone else to do something that Dredd himself should have done. Judge McKnighty? McTighty? McKnighty? <laughs> I do apologise. Judge McKnight. We'll go with that. Or tight. Judge McTight. He is part of the tech division. As you can see on his badge, that is a great picture. I'm going to assume that's a Henry Flint one. He is, was great at technology. This was picked up in the Academy of Law. He was never destined to be a street judge. He worked tirelessly in the tech division and actually helped form it after a few of the debacles they've had over the years with lawgivers and the Mechanisos robot program. He is he's a pretty cool, unlikely leader, as it says down there, but I quite liked his story arc. Not all judges become street judges. Then we have Judge Morph. He was part of the old guard who helped train a lot of the cadets in the Judge Dread youth era. He actually holds the record for training the most street judges. He was classified as a mentor of Judge Dread and taught Dread that if you ever have questions or are questioning the Justice Department setup, the trick is 
wear a pair of shoes that don't fit. And it is believed that Judge Dredd wears a pair of shoes that are one size too small because of him. Judge Niles, he is the current, as far as I'm aware, leader of the SJS and the PSU. He basically came in and cleaned house. He uh, followed on from a lot of corrupt individuals like Edgar and really cleaned up the justice department that looks after the spies. Oh, Nimrod. Didn't expect to see him in here. Nimrod is... Uh, you might actually remember Nimrod was mentioned in the Sylvester Stallone movie to represent the clones that were being uh, grown. That was the Nim Nimrod project, I believe. But uh, basically, he is made from the DNA of Chief Judge Fargo, a.k.a. Judge Dredd. But they manipulated it more than they should have, and it led to some instability, as you can now see in that beautiful face. Judge Nixon, part of the Wally Squad story arc, alongside Dirty Frank. She was working in the low life. Uh, turns out she was corrupt and was trying to assert herself as an overlord gang boss in the low life. She fled to Hondo City, and Judge Frank went and got her. Judge Ox. Oh, I remember this guy. Recently read a comic about this guy. Uh, he had a great service record, and then he lost his arm, as you can see here. Bionics back in the day weren't an acceptable thing within the Justice Department, so he moved to the Academy of Law. And I think during the Apocalypse War, he was captured by the Sovs and disappeared for years and then we had a story arc where Dredd went off to, uh, oh, here we go, Gulag. Went off to the Gulag to rescue these judges. It was ultimately a trap created by the Sovs in order to capture Mega City One judges in their territory. But uh, I believe he died defending another injured judge. Ooh, teaser. Judge Odell. He, ooh, where are we? Yep. He was part of the Kraken program. So when they captured Judge Kraken, who became Judge Dredd for a little while, he uh, it was his job to rechain the captured Judder and turn him into a street judge. Obviously, something went wrong, and he's kind of to blame for it. Judge Omar, he was the head of side division way, way, way back. Pre, I'm trying to think, pre... Where is it? Shogun, yeah. So way, way back. So this was um, when the side department was first being formed. He was probably one of the first judges to look after it, if I remember correctly. He gave his life fighting off Shogun the Warlord, which we covered in the other book because he was in there. He used a machine that could amplify his powers to allow him to fight the war, the Warlord. But... It was at a cost. For every second he was in the machine, even though he gained super psychic strength, it basically tore away his life, leaving him a dried up husk at the end of it. Pretty sad way for that character to go. Oh God, why is this guy in here? Judge Powell, he's the friendliest street judge you can find in Mega City One. He is the face of the Justice Department. He was meant to citizens comfortable <laughs> reporting crimes he's got such a cheesy smile in this picture i can't help but laugh um i believe he actually hated his job and wanted to just be a street judge and whilst on a routine patrol he got kidnapped and was held for ransom but it ended in tragedy and i think he died if i remember the story correctly there is now a new judge pal but he i'm gonna assume he's the original one based on the kidnap and tragedy, the Powell Club was something for kids to snitch on their parents. <laughs> it's such a silly story arc. Uh, Judge Pepper, once again, lost his leg in the line of duty, got replaced with Bionic, so he was no longer allowed to be a street judge. He ended up teaching a lot of the current story arcs, young judges, if I remember correctly. I think he's linked to, I want to say... Giant Junior was probably trained by him, if I can remember. He also helped fight against uh, the corrupt Chief Judge Cal and led the resistance with some other tutors. He ended up losing his life, though, to some stupid game show contestants. It was a pretty sad way for him to go. He was quite a cool character. Oh, here we go. Judge Pierre, 
she uh, was one of Judge Dredd's assistants. They met during the Apocalypse War, which is why she seemingly has this giant piece here. But unfortunately, she met her and when Sabat raised the dead and she was helping Judge Dredd on a hot dog run with some fresh-faced cadets and she met her end saving their lives. She was mere meters from the gates of the wall when the zombie hordes overran them and killed her. And we have Judge Priest, another one of Sector 301. This book must have been written around that time, I'm guessing. He was a pretty violent judge and ultimately was found corrupt for his over-the-top violence. He managed to escape during a prison ship riot and he ended up becoming like this weird doing God's work, basically. The angel of death, he went around killing people for crimes. He felt he was doing God's work, as he called it. He ended up being killed, but he had a good little story arc. Right, so now to 94, 95, uh, 96, 97, all the way to 98, we learn about the public servants of the mega city justice department, known as the heart of the justice department. So the street division has its different ranks. You have the divisional chief, regional commander, deputy regional, sector chief, deputy sector chief, watch commander, attack group leader, and a street judge. And it talks a bit about the street judges, how they patrol the megways, the pedways, bike patrol, and sky patrol. And we go into the actual station houses, which is pretty cool. A little bit about the sector house, the role of a sector house. Uh, covered in volume one. I still don't have the volume one yet. It's it's annoying me. I really need volume one. If anybody out there has it and wants to sell it at a reasonable price, do let me know. Uh, we then have some additional resources of a sector house. So they have the Dream Scanners, which is a member of the Med Division. And they have a Dream Reading Machine on site. These devices are rarely used except for when needed. Oof, and they basically uh, look at, <laughs> they can scan your dreams for guilt. The interrogation cubes, which makes sense. The med bay judge auxiliaries, which are uh, just your c civilians that help out the Justice Department. Your quartermaster, the tech bay, the watch commanders. There's three of them, one for each eight hours of the day. Sector chief, and then talks about the different watches and how a day shift would usually work in Mega City 1. We then get this lovely image of Judge Dredd. Not sure who the artist is. It's not screaming anyone in particular to me. If you know, drop a comment. Then we back into characters. So Judge Poliski. Hopefully I've said that one. Uh, he wanted to be a chief judge. And he was very famous for being a forthright servant of the law, and he continues to help. But he does have a secret shame. I'm not going to tell you because that's a bit of a spoiler. Judge Point, another great Wally Squad judge. He was part of the trifecta with Dirty Frank and Judge Dredd, and uh, he's so cool. He pretends to be part of the simp movement, dresses up as this silly clown, it's hard to tell if he is 100% legit most of the time. He genuinely is, and he is a great character. I love his story arcs that I've read so far. I think he is a great character. Then we have Judge Praga. He is a retired judge, and he's currently on the long walk in the Undercity. And he dealt with werewolves. <laughs> uh, judge Quincy. I have... A model, I think it's a mongoose one, that is Judge Quincy. He's not in New Fronts. He is in a, a boxer shorts in the versions I've got. But during the Judge Carl reign, he uh, he lost a button on his uniform, which actually helped Judge Dredd start working out what was going on within the Justice Department. But because he was missing a button, the mad chief judge said, well, you're not worthy of the uniform, so you don't get to wear it anymore. It's weird that in the comic strip that he existed, he would have had the Mark I lawgiver, yet in this piece of artwork he has the Mark II. That's a bit of a naughty, naughty rendition of him. 
Judge Renga. He was part of the hunting party story arc, which I just read recently. He was a cadet. He went out with a load of other cadets, along with Judge Dredd, Judge DeMarco, and I want to say Judge Giant Jr., I think. I think that was the three of them. They went out. They were meant to discover where these land sharks were coming from and try and kill them off. And pretty much most of the group either got completely beaten up, killed, or they just met with so much trouble on their travels. But Ragnar, along with, uh, what was his name? Judge Stark, I think the other one was. They completed their training and got promoted to be full-time street judges. I want to read this because uh, I'm interested to see what, according to these guys, happened to him after that. Then we have Judge Rico, obviously Judge Dredd's clone brother. Once again, it's shown him with the Mark II lawgiver. He was around before that, unless this is a different Rico. Maybe it's a different... Oh, it's a different Rico. Okay, this is a Rico that I have not reached in the story acts yet. I'm so far behind. It's quite comical. I gotta get reading. Uh, Judge Rothman. I remember the name, but I can't think what he is. He is a screwball, part of the public surveillance unit, a posting particularly well suited to his indirect skills. He served as the SJS in Sector 1. Oh, there we go, 301. There we go, and was transferred to Street Division in 303 after bugging his superior's office. Due to his inexperience, he bungled a raid and allowed several perps to escape. Oof. And he wounded another judge. Oh my god, he is horrific. Judge Roth. Oh, okay, I'm getting confused. It. I thought they were the Roth man. I was thinking of this judge. Sector 301 recently read that. Oh, the pages are stuck together like that. That's a shame. Um, he was part of the Sector 301 in the West Hab. He was part of the SJS. He was pretty evil and... 100% corrupt, I want to say. I want to say he was corrupt. Hang on. Yeah, he was corrupt. He was taking bribes from the Friends Syndicate. Then we have Judge Sanchez. Uh, she always seems to be in the right place at the right time to get involved with major events in Mega City 1. She had a reputation for being ever-present and constantly around when things went wrong. While she was never blamed for such incidents, she always was involved. <laughs> That's quite funny. Um, <laughs> I, I quite like that. She was uh, obviously in a hot dog run story arc. And Incubus. Oh, that's the Xenomorph story arc. I love that story. Judge Senka. He is, uh, I want to say, the side department. Yep, there we go. Member of side division. Having served it virtually his entire career, he is a precog, which means he can see into the future. And while he is not as constant or accurate as the late Judge Fay, he has a great strength to him. Then we got Judge Sulcum. He helped Judge Carl rise to power during that story arc. Uh, and during the fall of Carl, he ended up getting put in a tube. And preserved for all time. That was a very fitting end for that piece of scum. <laughs> then we have Judge Stark. We talked about him a little bit. He's actually from Britzit and he decided to transfer to Mega City One and decided that he was going to become a Mega City One judge. He was part of the hunting party that went after the land sharks, as I mentioned. He fought during the Second Robot War, but ultimately he died as an undercover judge. It was very sad. I remember that story arc when it actually came out, when I used to have the subscription. Judge Steele, once again, another Britsit character that came over to Mega City 1. She actually was in a lot of the audiobooks by Big Finish Publishing, which I hope they re-release at some time, because I really enjoyed the ones I have heard. But she used to be the focus character. You'd have Dread and then Judge Steele. She was quite an interesting character. I quite enjoyed it. Judge Zero, a.k.a. Lenny Zero. He is a rogue Wally squad judge. He has some great stories. 
if you want to have an enjoyable mega city one read laugh looked at like normal citizen viewpoint get the lenny zero book it really is good any of the uh the wally judge stories if you can get a hold of them i think 2000 ad have some great collections of them read them they're so good you will not be disappointed and that is actually the last character so we're finishing on lenny zero look at that 128 pages this is a super long book review i will not be offended if you had to watch this over multiple viewings but i hope you enjoyed um probably take a rest from book reviews for a little bit because i've only got one left and that's a bit of a beast but uh i hope you like comment subscribe all that good stuff and cheers for tagging along Bye bye